Hey, what's going on guys? Jolt here, back with another build video. And today we're going to be going over my Shadow Stab build. Guys, this build is ridiculous and probably one of the easiest builds to set up. No joke, you really only need like three items to make it work. But if you really want to, you can add additional things here and there and make it even more insane. Anyways, let's jump right into it and explain the build. Starting off, we have the Wailing Banshee, which is going to be the highest base damage melee weapon in the game. And what we're doing here is activating a certain interaction known as Blast Chill. And the Blast Chill skill will hit for insane damage, and I could go into all the math and stuff, but just know that it's double dipping and hitting for, like, crazy stuff. So with that in mind, every 1 in 5 melee hits is going to be insane. That also goes for all of your action skills too. Up next, we have our Masher, which is going to debuff the enemy. Um, we're not using this for damage. You can see at the bottom, we have the melee bolt. So if you stack it up, we can get a huge melee damage bonus. Um, I will say now, this is not going to be a major part of the build. It's only going to be for your tougher bosses. So stack it up on your boss and then release Dreadwind or your From the Shadows or anything you want. The Livewire. I'm pretty sure by now, you've probably seen it on a lot of melee builds out there on YouTube. This thing will create shock chains just by holding it and hitting melee strikes. And with that in mind, we can get a bonus from the skill Exploit Their Weakness and get bonus damage. We're not even shooting the gun, we're just holding it for the bonus, and that's it. The White Rider is a really good choice, so put this thing on single beam, not dual beam. And you can take care of all your flying enemies and get out of fight for your life. Now, this one is optional, you don't even need it. Uh, the highest melee damage I've seen in the game is 40% on a blade. So if you want to go for absolute perfection during single mobbing, then you can, you know, swap to this. As for the rings, you're just going to go with the typical Mood Ring and Championship Ring. Sadly, at the moment, there's really not that many great rings in the game, so we just put on our Bossing Ring and our Ward Not Full Ring and get the best bonuses out of that. Ideally, try to get your melee damage rolls on it and you will be set. For the shields, we're going to go with the Body Rune for mobbing and the Cursed Whip for bossing. Um, the Body Rune is going to keep you alive for mobbing, so each time you get a kill, you get 15% healing. And as well, you will hit for fire damage too if you get a kill. Remember, we're using the Exploit Their Weakness skill to spread dots so we can get bonus damage. So now we're spreading the Livewire Shock Dot and also the Body Rinse Fire Dot. Oh, by the way, Dot means damage over time. As for the Cursed Wit, like I said, only for your bossing because you're going to be up close and personal. Uh, not really much to say about this shield. It's just busted because you get 100% bonus damage for hugging the enemy. And because we're doing melee, you want to have all the damage you can. For the armor, Paradigm every time. It's just such a good piece of armor. You'll be getting a small boost to your melee and ability damage if you increase your spell damage. And the most important thing on this piece of armor is to get at least one on Blast Chill. It's an insane skill and you want to get the most out of it you can. And of course, for the passives, get anything that's going to help your melee. For the amulet, you want to get yourself a Theurge. And ideally, try to get Berserker or Stabomancer power on it. Now, when it comes to the elemental damage, try to, you know, match your elemental blades. In this case, I'm using Cryo Blade, so I want to boost my Frost damage. But if you have a Fire Blade or a Shock Blade, you know, you want to boost that instead. So, the Theurge is basically going to cool down your action skill if you cast a spell. And that spell is going to be the Arcane Bolt. Not only does it have a really low cooldown time for activating the Theurge for your action skill cooldown, but it's also a simple cast so you can cast out and activate all of your enchants. If you want to, you can aim the spell at enemies, or you can be like me and just, you know, shoot it into the sky or at the floor. For your bossing spell, you want to put yourself on the Buffmeister, and ideally you want to get yourself Bonk and Kachow at the bottom. Bonk will make the Buffmeister do bonus melee damage, and Kachow will make you do bonus ability damage. Also, you get a nice speed bonus too, which will be nice for getting around for your melee build. And finally, we have ourselves to Twin Souls, so that's going to be for your bossing if you're transferring the damage through Ghostblade, or if you want to run around and mob with it too. Now, the reason why it's so great for Ghostblade is because it has a fast swing speed. So while your Ghostblade is going off, you have a pretty high chance to activate Blast Chill and, you know, insta-wipe the boss like you saw in the montage. When it comes to your bigger bosses though, like Barkenstein or, you know, the Maker and stuff, you definitely want to keep on your Willing Banshee and activate Blast Chill through Dreadwind. As for the Enchant, anything that's going to boost melee damage is a plus. So for the melee weapons, we have the Elemental Damage 35% on Action Skill Start. For all of the weapons, we have the 40% melee on action skill start, except for the White Rider, we have the poison damage on that. For your shields, you want to match your melee weapon, so we have a Cryo one, so we're using the Frost Anoint on action skill active. And then for your spells, you want to use your spell cast melee damage annoying. Anyways, that's it for the gear, so let's go over the skill tree. For the skill tree, it is very straightforward, we are taking everything that's going to boost our melee damage and also debuff the enemy for bonus damage. Uh, right here, we're getting bonus damage for being close to the enemy and, you know, applying our Cryo. And then finally, the big one down here, Blast Chill is insane. Again, I could go into some math and, you know, bore you guys, but I will keep it straightforward and say that it's doing way more than it should. And when you apply this to your melee hits or your action skill hits through Ghost Blade or from the Shadows or your Dreadwind, you have a 20% chance to hit for massive damage. So the harder that your melee hits, the harder that Blast Chill is going to scale up and hit for too. 
For the capstone, this one's actually pretty important because you don't want to have much downtime waiting for your cooldown on your action skills. So by spamming your arcane bolts and activating your theurge for cooldown and also getting kills, your action skill cooldown is going to be extremely fast and there's not going to be any downtime. Also, if you can for your melee items, try to roll Ancient as the modifier. And Ancient's going to give you action skill cooldown just for meleeing the enemy too. On top of that, this capstone will allow you to get longer duration on your action skills if you get a kill. So you can stay in Dreadwind longer, or from the shadows longer, or have your ghost blade out longer too. Really, really good skill. Again, we're not worrying about the healing because we have the body rune on, and that's going to heal us up. And when it comes to bossing, you can't get kills in the first place usually, so healing's not going to matter at that point. You go in, do the setup, and wipe out the boss before they have a chance. The final thing I want to mention for the skill tree is the follow-up skill. When you're holding the live wire, it will shoot out the shock chains when you melee enemies, and that will stack up follow-up and give you bonus melee damage on your next strikes. And the final thing is the nimble finger skill, and you're going to get bonus spell damage for, you know, doing melee damage. And that spell damage is going to go straight into your paradigm armor and convert into melee and action skill damage. As for the hero points, you want to throw everything into strength and dexterity for the crit chance and crit damage. And then the rest of them go into spell cooldown to get your buff meister up faster or your arcane bolt. You could also throw your final points into action skill cooldown, but that's handled by the Theurge and also the capstone for the Berserker. Alright, I believe that is everything we need to know here, so let's go ahead and show off the build. Alright, so we're on Chaos 20, and I'm going to be doing From the Shadows for the mobbing because I find it the most fun. Uh, Ghostblade and the Berserker's Dreadwind skill are kind of for your bosses. You don't really need those for mobbing, but you can use them if you want to. Uh, we're going to hold the live wire. We're going to activate our enchants. Use From the Shadows. And now we can run around and swipe enemies using the, uh, what do you call it? The Wailing Banshee. And the cool thing about the Wailing Banshee is when you hit the enemy with it, you can actually have a projectile come out. And that will hit for melee damage and wipe out the enemy. Alright, let's go ahead and see if we can get blast chills. So we will uh, hit the enemy. Well, we hit them both. But yeah, if you get lucky, it's a 1 in 5. You can activate blast chill and it will just decimate the other enemies nearby. Alright, let's go ahead and see if we can get blast chill to go off. Yep, right there. And you can see we crit for 664. The melee was 158k. And the blast chill dipped up to 664k. Complete overkill for mobbing, but when it goes off, yeah, they're going to feel it. Just imagine how a boss feels. Let me show off the live wire really quick, so we'll go ahead and slap the enemy. And you can see there the shock chain came over and hit him. Also, yeah, blast chill. And also, we got the fire damage from our body run too. Remember, if we stack dots, we're getting bonus damage from the exploit the weakness skill. And that means we're going to get even more damage. All right, this guy here. Boop. Goodbye. Yeah, blast chill is quite ridiculous. And we got a chain there to hit that guy, so we'll take him out. So we do have a flying enemy, and they're pretty annoying for melee because, you know, they're out of range. So you could use Ghost Blade or whatever you want, but I like to use a gun for this because it's just, you know, a lot easier to take them out. So we'll just use the uh, White Rider and just wipe them out. Now, I know it takes away from the melee setup a little bit, but flying enemies have always been a problem in the game, and you gotta, you know, adapt to that. From the Shadows is fun and all, but the big damage is actually gonna be from Dreadwind and chaining your Blast Chill. So we're gonna try that out real quick. So we'll find the crystal here, start spinning. And he's already dead, yeah. And also, you can cancel your Dreadwind by pressing the action skill again, and it will uh, refund some cooldown. Alright, here's the real fun right here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop on the Buffmeister, because I like the speed. Also, the speed does transfer into Dreadwind for getting around faster. And if we do this right, we can chain everything here in one duration, but it is a little bit RNG dependent. So here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Got that guy. This guy here. And we're just going to try to find those red dots fast and wipe them out, except perils are a thing too. Oh well, doesn't really matter. After the boss, we're going to chain him, and he's dead. Anyways, I'm going to make my way to the secret boss, and we'll see if we can do the insta-kill on him. Alright, before the secret boss, we do have Banshee, and Banshee is kind of a pain to get close to, and also there's Mayhem Water. So we're going to do Curse to Whip, Buffmeister, and probably keep our distance using the Ghost Blade. So there we go. And what we're going to do is uh, debuff with the um, Masher, using the Masher Bolts. Alright, so we're going to activate Buffmeister, go for the debuff, place the blade. And yeah, you can see there, Blast Chill just said, you know what? You're not going to be a boss today. In case you're wondering too, the Banshee does drop the Wailing Banshee, so make sure you pick one of those up for the build. Alright, now for the secret boss, so let's go ahead and do the same setup, except we're going to be using the um, Berserker. Uh, so Dreadwind, put that on. We're going to get nice and close, activate Buffmeister, go for the debuff, and hopefully get a nice spin kill here. Yep, there we go. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for the build video today. So if you do want to try out the build for yourself, I will link the save file over on my Discord. All you got to do is join, and it will be under the game save section. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did, then please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be awesome. And if you really enjoyed it and want to see more Wonderlands content, then be sure to sub. You guys have a great day, and I will see you all later. Peace out.